Welcome to Real Talk Live. For those of you all who are joining us for the first time, my name is Colanda. And this is Stanley. And thank y'all so much for joining us. We're talking about distant learning tonight, um, specifically online church. And this is something that we have not discussed the entire pandemic, but it is the, the one of many things that is affecting the body right now. So, where do you want to start, Pastor? I mean, I wish you quit calling me Pastor because people are starting to call me that for real. Well, Pastor is also a term of endearment, like leader. It, it is, but not for me. It's, it's not for me. <laughs> no, PJ, you cannot have my jersey. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, what I was about to say. I, I actually enjoy online church. Um, I love the... Praise the Lord. God bless. We have evangelist, missionary Sheree Williams in with us. God bless you. But no, honestly, I actually enjoy online church. Um, I, I love the benefits of it. I love the, um, what's the word I want to use? The convenience of it. I love the, the way that you can become, you can just be you um, without any, um, you know, you don't have to put on or anything like that. Uh, you know, if it's a word that you really need to hear, you know, sometimes, especially those that are in leadership, it's kind of hard for you to um, react to the word like you want to react because for some reason we feel like people are going to be looking at us and this and that and the other. But if it's a word that you really, really hear and something that's going to really get you on the straight and narrow, you could be home by yourself, like crying and snotting and all of that with nobody looking at you funny or anything like that. So I really love... Um, online church and I, and I i i don't see anything wrong with it to be honest so uh a lot of people do and i get it you know they like that community um but i'm the, i guess to each his own but me i don't see anything wrong with it. it's a lot of great benefits yeah. to online church kyle says she thought mm -hmm. you were a pastor one of the realest down-to-earth pastors why kylo why why Y'all don't forget to share the video. Don't forget to share the video. It has not officially been installed, but like I said, it's the term of endearment when you're when you're over something. Technically, I could be considered the pastor of Church Girls Movement because we're the leaders of those wow. organizations. It's a term of endearment. No, no. You're taking it kind it's of like the non-denominational churches. Everybody no. a pastor. Right. This is That's over something. No. Pastor over the music. No. Yeah. No. So you made a, you made a good point. Uh, hey, Daryl, you made a good point about how you know sometimes as leaders we're watching services, and so we have to be mindful about how we react. And then on the flip side, if the word isn't as good or we're not enjoying church, we kind of have to put on the front because we're being watched, even if we're not enjoying the message. So I do. Oh, Daryl, we did not. <laughs> Go ahead. So I do like the the freedom to be able to um I'm gonna just say it. Like if I'm enjoying it, I'm gonna tune in. And if I don't like this part, I have the option to skip it and tune into something else. And then I come back to see where you guys are at in the service. Mm -hmm. I like that option. I think that yeah, I think that <sighs> I tell you what, these people know they know how to try you try your patience. <laughs> and Daryl is one of them. But anyway, um, online church as well. You get to be not a fake one. I have the stitches in my jersey and my numbers to prove that it is a real jersey and all of that other stuff. Anyway, <laughs> uh, no, but online church, uh, I know, like I said, because of the times that we live in, um, and I do want to put this out here that pastors and leaders are going to have to accept that this is the new reality for the church. Yes. Um, things are not really going to be go back to normal. So online church is where it's at now. Matter of fact, a friend of mine, he started a church and his church is on Zoom and it's actually growing. They, they, they log in, they worship, they get the word, um, they're tithing, they're faithful, and it's actually doing pretty good, you know, for the moment. And I even asked him, I was like, so what you looking for, a building or something? He was like, to be honest, I don't even think I want to get a building because Zoom is so convenient right now. So, mm -hmm. um, and he said he prayed with them and everything. God is such a great God to where, you know, we could be in different places around the world 
at the same time and he can still get the job done. So I would definitely say, um, I would definitely say that, um, that online church is exactly, you know, where it's at and, and, and honestly embrace it. You know, you got more people you can reach online. Than A lot of people won't physically come to church because of so many issues, but online they still get the word and they're able to go on with their day. So. I think since we've been online, I probably uh, hear the word more because like so we have we have church on sunday and then we have bible study on wednesday night but then there's this other bible study that i tune into on on thursdays and then you know i want to catch and see what uh my online pastor matthew stevenson did at his church and then i want to kind of see what bishop jakes did at their church and then i got to see what my home girl sarah jakes and them did so i think i hear more word now that we're online because I am able to visit different churches churches at my own convenience. The only thing yeah. I want to, and I, and I agree, I, this is the new norm for churches. And I think we, I hope they invest it. I hope they have invested well. And why do I want your jersey? Because it's a, it's a, I don't know, but they get on my nerves for this. And no, I did not get this jersey from Good, Goodwill. Daryl, Daryl about to get kicked out the real room. Just got back in the real room, going to get kicked out. Anyway, <laughs> and, um, um, but but yeah, I what think you were saying, I, yeah. I hope they've invested well um, in <laughs> the equipment because I don't think we're gonna we're not gonna be able to go back um, to the way things were and where you just only offer service in person. I think this is a new ministry. Um, yeah. for a lot of churches now. What do you think about the churches who have decided not to opt? Oh, this is what I wanted to ask you before we start any of this. What do you say to the churches who um, haven't decided to go online at all? Um, they're just going to keep things. I mean, to each his own, but when you notice, when if you're noticing a decline in your membership, that could be because they're actually a part of somebody else's online ministry as well. So um, I understand that that may not necessarily be your thing, but you got to keep up with the times that we live in. And right now, um, online church is where it's at. So, um, you know, as much as a lot of preachers preach against Facebook and social media, um, that's where people are at right now. And that's just something that we're just going to have to accept uh, to get it done. Um, I get it. I know that you would like for them to physically be in the building and physically be a part. But um but at the end of the day, because of the times that we're in right now and situations, you have to embrace it. So I would definitely encourage pastors and leaders to really do it. And to be honest, you're actually reach people like, for instance, I know people, I know pastors that are online, but they have members in all around the, the nation. And they're actually more faithful in their contribution than the ones that physically come every week. I so you don't know what type of yeah. connections and blessings that you're missing out on because you want to limit what God is what God can do in your ministry so I think you should just give it a shot and just trust God I mean I don't know what the big fear about it is if you're preaching the word then I mean, you don't have nothing to be ashamed about and then even well, Facebook real messy it's only messy if you make it messy I think though the so, issue yeah. probably is the fellowship part how do they since the Bible tells us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves I think churches struggle on well how because you know I think the only way that we could do that is on Sunday morning. So then how what's their remedy so that they're still obe obedient to the scripture? Well, the Bible, I, I believe that that scripture. Oh God, how can I say this without without messing up? You being taken out of context. Because, yeah, it becomes a pretext for you to say what you want. I, I get it. But the Bible does talk about fellowship and, um, and, and dwelling together in unity. And there he commands the blessing. But a lot of times you don't have to physically be together to be unified. Right. Um, you know, the Bible says if any two would touch, uh, would, would agree with uh, any two that would touch. We always say touch and agree. But the scripture actually says any two that would agree as touching. That means your agreement has to be so close with each other to where you can feel each other. You know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily have to touch and agree, but you agree so close to where you feel agreement. So you physically have to be together 
to fellowship, you can fellowship in the spirit. You can unite in the spirit. So if, you know, if you're online and the ministry um, has um, like a, a care group or something, they can call and check on you. Hey, how you doing? Um, you know, just checking on you, making sure everything's good and this and that. Um, you know, so it's, it's different ways you can go around fellowshipping. Um, you have small groups that you can do. You have, you know, small Zoom meetings that you can have a lot of resources that you can do. And fellowship also doesn't necessarily mean just your uh, specific church. You can fellowship with other Christians and other believers as well. Um, but we just got to be more open and allow God to just do greater things. We got to quit being so closed in to just our four doors, our four walls. But there is a lot of ministry that we could do and a lot of fellowship that we could do. Honestly, in this time of pandemic, I've actually been able to connect with more, more Christians outside of the four walls of my church yeah. um, this year than I've ever done, you know, in my entire life of being in church because I've been able to connect with other Christians and stuff like that. I've been able to learn different things about God and learn different things, you know, about ministry, connecting with other people versus, you know, doing it the traditional way and just limiting myself to just my church membership. That's good. Um, yeah. Darren said he buying that online de demon. I, well, uh, that leads me to this um, question, and I want you all to answer this too in the comments. Is it easier to be committed to serve it to church now that we're online, or are you all finding it diff more difficult to like tune in or to be committed? Oh, that's what you're asking the people to comment. Yeah. Is it more I like what Sister Todd said, though, in the comments. She said, right, my church has broken up the church for pastors to Zoom with us. It's great. See, yeah, you can, you can connect without physically connecting. And I get it. A lot of people want that physical connection, but uh, it is what it is at this moment. I don't mean that if we come together and we, not, we still don't agree. That's why Thank I you. It's beautiful. And you know what, though? Everybody keep... I'm going to say this, and God, I'm going to get in trouble for this one. not getting funded because we don't, we're not agreeing. We're just coming together, but we don't agree. <laughs> and I'm going to say this. I'm going to go on on them for saying this, and this is this is Stanley Platt's reflections and not reflection of the real room or any affiliations, but these are my thoughts. Honestly, I'm, everybody keeps saying, I can't wait to get back to church. I can't wait to get back to church. Um, but honestly, I actually can, because what I notice is if we do get back to church, what's the point of me rushing to get back to church if I still got to deal with your neck, some people attitudes, I still got to deal with politics, I still got to deal with this and that, I still got to deal with the same old, same old routine. Now, if there's something fresh and new that God is doing, then yes, I can't wait to get back to church. But if there's nothing fresh that God is doing, then I'm sorry, it's no rush on my end. I'm just saying, I'm going to take my time until God does something fresh. You don't have to, you should be proving it now. So when the exactly. door back up. Give me a reason to want to come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, is your, this is your time to prove it now while we're online. So when the doors open, I can't wait to get there. But don't be doing the same thing we did while we were in person that you not exactly. you online and want me to rush back. I'm going to let somebody have my seat in my pocket space. Exactly. Because if I can enjoy the presence of God in my home, I'm just being honest, and a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but if I can enjoy the presence of God in my home, get the word of God in my home, and I don't have to go to church, I don't have to deal, I don't have to argue over no parking space, I ain't got to worry about no attitude, I ain't got to worry about the saints doing this and that, I ain't got to worry about people in leadership saying this to that, I ain't got to worry about the lying and the bite biting and all of this, but I'm spiritually getting fed and I'm growing then, and I'm just playing the devil's advocate right now, then what, why should I come back physically to church if I'm being fulfilled at home? Yeah. Just saying. Why should I come back? So, and it's the thing, and I get it, they're saying, well, uh, forsake not the assembly, um, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. I understand that, but what, I am assembling with y'all online. Just saying. You actually, know, I'm that's made a good point. She says, um, online church is easier in the sense that I don't have to log on, um, but harder because it can be difficult to focus only on tuning in and not being distracted or urged to do other things while tuning in. I agree. Sometimes it can that be makes sense. To multitask, like to not multitask, because sometimes I'm cooking while watching praise and worship, or I am washing dishes while watching watching praise and worship. 
So I understand it can yeah. be. It, it can be. And it's the thing, man. I mean, our general, and, and honestly, you have a very mature saint to be able to enjoy, to be able to discipline yourself to do it. It's just like anything we do online. It's just like going to school online. It's just like doing anything. So when you are part of an online, if your church is online, you are going to have to discipline yourself and monitor, you know, what you do while you're doing that and make sure that you're paying attention to the work. Because like I said, you know, I honestly, I went to church physically. I went to church yesterday. That's only because I had to take care of something. But, you know, this most of this year, this entire year, I've been online since we've been during the pandemic. And I've honestly, my spiritual life has actually been growing more yeah. because I'm not distracted. Because to be honest, we have distractions when we go into the physical church. Sure. So we really do. Let somebody walk in there that you don't like. You know what I'm saying? Or let let something happen while we're in church. Let somebody trip and fall while we're in church. You know, we're going to bust out laughing and this and that. And you know what I'm saying? And like I, you know, I, like I said, and most of the people that's rushing the church, they're not applying none of that stuff they hear in today's life anyway. They're still <laughs> gossiping, still talking about people, still sowing discord, still you know, bite, biting and doing all that crazy stuff, but then they want to convict you for not being in church. Oh, I don't lost somebody. <laughs> see, keep this in mind. Oh, see, can you say we're online? Woo! We don't have to worry about the building for an offering. Um, Thank say you, Marcus. I got a witness. Yeah. Thank you, Marcus. They'll say y'all be <laughs> online watching Greenleaf and Power in church. <laughs> First of all, I don't do that. If I'm in church, I'm in church. I don't do that. Yeah, you got to stay focused either way. Yeah, I'm just saying. You have to be intentional to stay focused. Worshiping God at home will be difficult if home was never a sanctuary or a place mm. of prayer before. I know for yeah, that's sure. That's true, Sister Ty. Practicing it before, it would be hard for me. That's true. That is very true, Sister Ty. And um, like I said, it does take mature. You you have to be a mature saint to be able to balance that, to know, okay, this is my time that I would normally be physically in church. So this is the time that I'm going to, you know, pretend that I'm not pretend, but I'm still going to participate in the work. Like I say, you know, I've been online and the praise team was doing a phenomenal job. And I've worshiped singing at my house and worshiping at my house and feeling the presence of God at my house, you know. It's no different than us watching, you know, ministry on TV like we used to do years ago when all these churches had the television ministry and stuff like that. So, you know, um, like I said, it's I, I've gotten used to it. I actually enjoy it. I, I love it. Um, and it, it's a benefit to me because I'm able to just receive the word as Stanley, not as elder class. I'm able to be Stanley at home. You yeah. know, when I go to church, you know, anything can happen. And, you know, so, yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, Todd said, most of us have codependent worship. That is so true. It's like they don't, they, they waiting for somebody else to jump start it before they get started. But when you're home, when I say, like, this is one of the times when mm -hmm. I say, and, um, I'm really finna throw Dale out the real room. He got one more comment, but go ahead. Well, sister, he got one more comment. When we had that memorial for Sister Rogers. When I say I had worship during a memorial service in hmm. my own house, it's like yeah. there is more freedom in being able to worship from online because then I don't have you as a distraction because if I don't like how you're singing the song, I can kind of tune you out and maybe sing over you or louder than you and not be a distraction to anybody else and go in at my, yeah. own, at my own house. What did Bell say? She said, the worship experience in a congregational setting is very difficult. It's like you push your brother to go deeper and your sister pushes you to go higher. I have my own worship at home, but at church, it's on a different level. I can agree with that as well. Like when I'm at home, I can, I can worship as I want to. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't have to worry about nobody. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Let's move on. Okay, y'all yeah. don't want to dance. Let me go on YouTube real quick. And, and get me a trike. <laughs> That's what you been doing, Stanley. You're I do it sometimes. I ain't gonna lie. I do it sometimes. I can't lose my dance. Man. You can't lose your dance. That's so you keep on practicing? I, no, I don't practice. I don't practice. No, I just goes in. You know what I'm saying? But or, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, like, like for instance, I was watching. Um, <laughs> I hate to say this, but I was watching Rance Allen um funeral, and people was upset because the man wasn't letting the people go forth in a praise. 
and at the funeral. And I guess because of time and COVID and all of those other things, people's getting upset. And so I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, if people want to shout that bad online, just go get you a trike and dance if it's that serious. You know what I'm saying? So you can still make churches, honestly, church is not the building. It's the body of believers. Yeah. But you can really have church anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's switch it from from our point of view to the other to the other the other part. Because I see sometimes um, I see the numbers go up and down when I'm watching different services, and I know there are different reasons why people tune in and out of church. Um, <laughs> um I'm gonna just say this because when I was like trying to when I was trying to like make the post for today, so people know what we were talking about. I saw a sign that said, join us in online worship. And I was like, why does everybody use this term? Everybody is not worshiping at their church. Like, mm-hmm. stop inviting me to join you in worship. And we never worship. So I think this is the opportunity for people to really um, see if there's any false advertising going on. Because, you know, you see a lot of oh, people. There's definitely is a lot of that. With a lot, you know, with huge followings and stuff, and so you imagine what their church must be like. But child, now you get to see that. Oh, yeah. that my nun in that church. I got, you know, and honestly, and, and I, I, I feel sorry for a lot of these churches because I've said it over and over again. A lot of these ministers are not going to bounce back after this pandemic, and and you can tell now that they're they're so out of. There are so many leaders that are just determined to do things their way to where they're forgetting, they're not allowing themselves to be stretched so God can use them in a better way. And by looking at some of the services that I'm seeing online with different ministries, I'm like, y'all are doing this exactly like there's nothing different than how you were doing it before. This is the perfect opportunity for you to allow the Holy Spirit to stretch you so you can reach people because now you're on social media. So now people that don't physically come to your church or have never been to your church, they now get to tune in and see, okay, well, I wonder how this person's having church and that person's having church. And when it's just the same old, soul, you know, same old songs, same old worship, same old lineup of service, same old, there's no, there's no flow. I'm telling you, you can really, if you really allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to give you creative ideas and wisdom, you can really allow the presence of God to flow. On. I'm telling you, I have literally felt the presence of God watching services yeah. online. Yeah. It can really happen. So you just got to be able to allow God to stretch you so you can be able to do that and, and, and just, just stop being rebellious. It's really, that's really what it is. It's, you're really rebelling against the spirit of God because you're just making up in your mind, this is how we're going to have church because this is how we've been doing it. Yeah. But so if so, for, so just in case we have like pastors or like people who help pastors or whatever on, tuned in, a lot of them, I'm sure think that they, you know, they don't want to do all that stuff because maybe they don't have the budget. But is are the lights and the lyrics on the screen and the smoke and is all of that necessary to to have an online? I don't think you have, no, it's not. You could do a simple. Like I said, I have a friend of mine. He started his ministry on on Zoom, and um, his members they they log in on Zoom. I wish he was. He normally is on the real room. I wish he was on here now in the comments so he'll tell you how you do it but um but they're on zoom and they just log into zoom it's a private zoom and they log in there he said he worship they, they sing a song or two he give them a word he minister he pray and you know they going on about their day and it's effective and zoom is free you know what i'm saying so it's a lot of free um tools out there that you can use to really make your ministry more um effective you know the bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel and i believe that going online and social media is one of the tools that you can do you may not never go to africa but somebody from africa can tune in and watch your service mm-hmm. you never you just never know that's so true i think though no, <gasps> but... <laughs> hey, anyway y'all we have two demons that's tuned in the real room tonight, and I need the saints to pray because I, I, I need these demons to leave. <laughs> one of their initials is DL, and the other one is LG. And I'm not talking about the phone LG. I know. Um, I, I think it is unfortunate for the leaders who have not decided to make the transition, especially when like platforms like Zoom have made it more of 
like easy for people to transition to online meetings and stuff because of the times and how they're offering like at one point zoom was offering free uh like you can get an hour free or like or something like that but what's marcus say something Ooh. I'm saying with smoke. Say yeah. Church. Mark is telling the truth. I don't I'm not one that believes in smoke machines in the church. That's just me. I'm old school. Call me old fashioned. I don't care. But I'm not a big fan of smoke machines in the church because I believe that you're trying to create a scene that God can actually I've been in services and church services where you can literally see the glory cloud appear in a building. Have right. you ever seen that before? Like it's misty and smoky in a building. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and that was no machine in there. So I don't think you need to um Well some people may say I don't think you need to do that. It's like setting them it's setting the mood. Yeah, like you don't have to set no mood. Like that to me, having a smoke machine is equivalent to burning sage. That's just me. Mm. I feel like you don't have to do that to set a mood. All you have to do is worship the Lord. God will bring his own smoke. God will bring his own fire. You don't have to create that kind of stuff. You do your job and give God a sacrifice and he'll come and consume that. And so that's something that you have to do. But um, that's just me. Um, I have a preference about that, but I'm with Marcus. Like, you can't be... <laughs> I'm talking about lady. You can't have all the bells and whistles and then you get on the mic and you're not saying nothing. Because that doesn't make me like, ignore the fact that you're not saying anything. So I don't care how many lights... You got the lyrics up, how fancy your equipment is. If you're not saying anything, that's so crazy. Maybe the AC vents was just to see. These keep killing me in these comments. And they, they, oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> Lonnie, Lonnie said, I'm a production manager and it's not smoke. No, he's not. Lonnie's not a production manager. Please don't let him tell that lie like that. Hey, for lighting purposes. Haze makes lighting have an ambiance. Have an ambiance. Look, I think the no, word it ain't. Yeah. Man, please don't try to use no word line and you don't know the meaning of. What's the meaning of ambiance? Like? He use it in the wrong kind. Like he is the wrong. Exactly. Word. It's the right. <laughs> word. It's the wrong form of the words. <laughs> but just keep it try up. to be great. <laughs> and you're a production manager. Get out of here. Now, no. a lot of, lot of his. I will give him his props though. Lani is a production manager, so he does. He has production work. Oh, yes. Yeah, you got to be a little bit more professional. Yeah, I don't like that word, Hayes either, Kenny. I like Yeah, I don't like that either. I don't like Hayes. But I'm telling you, I've been in services. I'm telling you, growing up in church, I've been in church all my life, but I've been in services where you literally see like a, like a, like a, like a fog in the building. And that's the, you know, and, you know, and I was always taught, you know, that was the Shekinah glory of God. That was the presence of God in there being manifested. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, there are times in the Bible where the Bible would talk about the smoke would fill the temple and stuff like that. So, yeah, there is definitely, you know, God can really manifest and stuff like that. But this, you know, we got to quit trying to create it and just allow God to do it. You know, we do so much. Just, just worship him. Be sincere. Be pure. And God will show up like you need him to. Even online, he'll show up. I think this is also a good time for those of y'all who may be struggling with this and you've been wondering. This is a good time for you to also leave your ministry if needed. Like, I'm just saying, it's just, it is. It's like the perfect, yeah. the perfect time. You just pour some, you just pour alcohol on the cut. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, people been looking for, there are a lot of people who've been looking for the door and, the Lord may be moving you to yeah. the next level. It's no time like the present to be able to do that. Yeah, this, yeah, the Lord may be shifting you to get somewhere where you can honestly get fed and of shift and change. So yeah, it like, really is. Right. It, it, it really that, is. And that's the thing. And that, that's what I'm saying. Like I said, you know, you got a lot of these people. I can't wait to go back to church. But then when you go back, you're gonna be complaining about your pastor. You're gonna be complaining about how the first lady treating you. You're going to be complaining about members. You're going to be talking about what, what they ain't doing and this and that and the other. So what are you rushing to go back for? It's not because a, that's normal or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like not, really consider this. You know, I'm not knocking going to church. I believe in going to church and I, I, I'm, I would definitely encourage that. But my thing is when you go back, what are you going, what are you going back to? Yeah. You know, are you going back to something 
greater that's going to enhance your spiritual walk or are you just going back to the normal routine of things and that's something that we got to evaluate when it comes back because you know there is going to be a time where we are going to be allowed to go back to to our churches and, and fellowship as as though we would normally do but my question is that when we go back can we expect something greater than it was before we left I, I feel like it should be Oh, Jesus. I don't know, what about eating in the... People that do that now, people do that now even with online church. They do what? What do they do online with, on, with online church? That's nothing like the saints coming together to lift up the name. Okay, that's true. I agree with that. But if you're, if you're going to church and the saints are not lifting up the name of Jesus together, then what's the point of what? going back? I'm, and honestly, I, I agree on both sides. But I, I hear both sides. I hear people say they'll never go back to church again. They like online. Really? I hear people saying they like, yeah, I've heard people say that all the time. They'll never go back because they enjoy online better. And then I hear people say, you know, well, I want to go back because I like to be amongst the saints. But like I say, the one, some of the ones I'll be like, well, why? So you can keep being messy? <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe. Just saying. They may miss the being in people's business. Yeah, no, they miss being nosy and hearing about who they got a divorce and I can't keep up with you now. Yeah. I don't see you. Every <laughs> yeah. You know, I I'm just saying, you know, try this stuff out and see if see what works. You Lonnie, know, whatever works for you works for you. Lonnie crazy to my what about eating in the church? I guess y'all don't believe in that too. No, I don't. No. This is a church ain't no theater. It's not an arena. You eat at the Florida theater. You don't eat in church. So you want like, God's house. You want to pop a piece of candy or nothing? Nah, I have. I, I have. I've done that plenty of times. But we was taught that you don't eat in church or whatever. That's how. I mean, that's you respect how. God's house. Yeah, that's what they told me. Can't you gum? No eat in church. But see, now folks, they be drinking coffee and having full McDonald breakfast. Well, <laughs> some, of those things, some of those churches are like stadium. You have theater seating so that it works for them. Yeah, but still, we were taught that if it's the house of God, if we said that this place is the place where God's presence dwells, then we should respect it as such. We shouldn't be in there eating because if you do that, it's like you're making the sanctuary into a theater. And That's how I was taught to me. Yeah, like you're just coming to be in the pain and stuff like that. When you step into God's presence, that stuff got to go. That's what they told us. They were like, no, you got to respect yeah, God's house. That's what they told us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, but yeah. Right. we were talking. All right. Sorry about it. <laughs> You're talking about not in culture. They still got few. Lonnie, shut up. Anyway, um, anyway, like I said, um, I like, honestly, there is a lot of, there are benefits to learning online, Bible study, um, uh, if you're not able to learn from Bible study, you have a lot of other ministries that offer great Bible studies, um, great resources, um, like uh, Pastor Darius Daniels. Uh, he has a um, web uh, masterclass that he's doing about studying the Bible. Um, I know a lot of y'all don't like him, but I do. Uh, Matthew Stevenson, he has the leadership masterclass that's online. Um, that's distant learning as well. Bishop Jakes has a lot of things online. Matter of fact, Bishop Jakes, He's been doing this online stuff for even before the pandemic. He's right. always been a progressive leader and things like that. So you have a lot of ministries that have a lot of resources online. And you may not necessarily be able to visit there, but um, but there are tools online that you can use to, you know, enhance yourself and enhance the ministry as well. And learn. Like I said, I've, I've honestly been learning a lot in this season. I had to a lot of stuff that I that I learned in church growing up, I had to I had to relearn. So I realized that a lot of stuff that we was teaching growing up in church was it was good, but it wasn't right. Yeah, that's that's where I've been to. I'll leave it. And we're not going over to. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, this has been a season of relearning as uh, Darius Daniels taught in his master class some time ago. Is that there's a lot of sand um that we've been taught <laughs> we've been taught a lot of sand um which means that we have a lot of truth that comes from the culture 
And so we've had to, in this season, unlearn some things and learn um, the truth of it. Other plus, come back. We're, we're recording. Um, Marcus said, I think it depends on the culture of the church. I think so, too, when it comes to drinking and eating in church. Uh, I don't see that as a stumbling block, but to eat. Mm -hmm. You all right? I'm good. I'm good. I had, I had to you say y'all say this the real room. I had to grab me some water. I had to grab me some water. Okay. When you say this is the real room, we just asking a question. Yeah, we keep it real in the real room. Now I've been to I now like leading up to what Kenny is asking. I do see people post their um I don't know their complaints. I think online service has given people an opportunity to be more vocal about their needs as a congregation. And I don't think we had that opportunity being face to face. It's easier, it's harder to go up to pastor and tell them what you don't like about church. But I see people online um, sharing uh -huh. more what their thoughts are about service. I be seeing them complain all the time. They, they do, and these people these days are not ashamed. And you know what, though? I was telling my mom and my aunt this. There was a time back in the day where you just didn't say anything bad about men and women of God. But on social media these days, I think because there's been so many, so many things have became uncovered that our generation has seen and stuff, and people that we've looked up to for years, have, we've seen so many flaws, you know, that they had. Nowadays, people are no longer afraid to express how they truly feel about ministries or leadership or people in leadership positions. So that is one of the downfalls of being online. It does open you up to be exposed in a different angle than it would have versus you physically being church. Because back in the day, if a pastor did X, Y, and Z, it took us years to find out about that. And by the time we found out about it, it was done and over with and you went on with your life. But nowadays, if you get out, Oh, yeah, it's instantly online. And then when you online preaching, then the comments, yeah, but what about that time you did this? Or what about when such and such did this? Or, you know, people write reviews now, they're going, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, that is a downfall too online. But if you're operating in, in the spirit of integrity, um, that, 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 that should not affect you. Um, that shouldn't affect you. You just keep being. <laughs> Simon said, why would you want to eat in church anyway? I don't get it. Maybe feed kids a cookie or candy, but to sit and eat, no way. God's house told it. Now, like, when Makai was younger and he would bring snacks, if that hour was struck and my stomach started... <laughs> I, was, I don't remember eating in church I, when I was a kid. I, I don't think my mama never, never gave me snacks. A snack bag. I, I sure would. Kenny, no, we're not going to answer your question because... We're not going to do that. Everybody's no, gonna have to say gonna do that. about every, their own place. So <laughs> exactly in general in general exactly specific churches. And I think if I think it's okay. Well, do you think it's okay that if people are not having a great online experience with their ministry, that it's okay to reach out to their leader? Yeah, I feel like they should. That's that's. I mean, the church belongs to the people. The church does not belong to one person. The church consists of the membership of the church. You are not bishop such and such members. You're not apostle such and such members. You're God's sheep. They're there to just manage the sheep until the Lord returns. So you have a right. This, this thing what a lot of pastors got to understand. Your congregation, and if they ain't learned this yet, this year they, they should learn it. Your congregation could literally walk out and say, we're not coming back no more. And everything that you have connected to that will totally fall apart. If, and that just shows right there that the church belongs to the people. Mm. I'm not saying it's to start a revolution and all of that, but I'm just saying. So that's why you should allow people to give some level of um, ideas or opinions or views or this and that. They could say, well, I'm sorry, Pastor. I know you bring such and such every year, but we tired of him. We want somebody fresh or I know the choir is saying these songs, but is it possible that we can kind of extend our worship and do something more fresh? Or, you know, I know we do this conference every time, but if we do it, could we do it like this to make it more interesting? You know what I'm saying? And that way you won't see so many people get bored in your ministry. Yeah. And when they get bored, they, they don't care. I think church is one of the few places that does not have, and this is my background, 
they don't have a marketing strategy. We want to use the Lord in the spirit to say that he gave us, that we rely on him for everything, that we don't have a good, mar we don't have a good marketing strategy. So like, even when we on are online, I think sometimes the churches don't have good online etiquette and they don't interact with the visitors. Or if I go to your website, I can't find what I need. Or maybe you don't have a website or, you know, you're not telling us how to give online or, you know, I think churches is one of the few places where it, it's almost as if, as if it does not matter what the congregation needs. This is what God told the pastor to do, and this is what the pastor's going to do, whether he, we like it or not. And if we don't like it... And if you don't like it, you can else. go. Exactly. That, and that's pretty much how they put it out before us. Everybody else is doing consumer surveys, trying to figure out what does the consumer want that will make us be loyal to this brand. But nobody, you know, the church doesn't do the same thing. Exactly. Like, you know, like, honestly, right now, outside of just doing your regular Sunday mornings and Bible studies, my question is, you know, you know, being that pastors now have so much, you know, what it seems to be, they have a lot of free time. Maybe they can start small groups. Hey, on Tuesdays, we're going to do small groups that keep the, keep the membership engaged on, um, you know, or. Um, I know Bishop Von McLaughlin, he does a thing on Fridays at midnight. He goes live on Facebook and he does a midnight thing on Fridays and he does Bible study or talk about whatever issues is going on. You have Bishop uh, Rudolph McKissick. He does a thing called a kickback on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Red Cup kickback. And, um, you know, they talk about all the type of things that's going on in the world and stuff like that. So this is a great opportunity to really stretch yourself beyond what you would normally do. So you can keep your membership engaged and let them know, hey, I'm still here. I'm still concerned. You know, I still want to be a part of your life and things like that. It's almost like you have to re-evangelize your church back. Right. And you're going to have to go through measures to re- Just because you say, hey, we're open, that don't mean people are going to come. <laughs> you're going to have to re-evangelize not just the sinners, but when this is over, you're going to have to re-evangelize the saints to come back. Yeah. So it. Yeah, the, the work is going to be even harder. I saw something today on social media that said suicide is up 200% since the pandemic. So that means you can't even, you shouldn't even be doing church as usual online because you really don't know who's tuned in now and who's without hope and who needs, who's like, Lord, this is your last chance. I just really need a word. Exactly. And we just missing the mark. I don't know. And what. they could tune. They could honestly be suicidal, contemplate suicide, and they tune into your service and your praise and worship team up there, like, and then they singing, "You are my strength, strength light." No, uh, that's literally how they be singing it. And I'm like, "Strength light, no other." <laughs> Did they be rocking? Reaches, Reaches to me. And that's a good song. But it, it does matter the way you sing it. You say these powerful souls, powerless. Yeah. And then, then y'all up there, everybody just looking. They just, ain't nobody engaged in the worship. It's like, you. <laughs> they just doing it to say we had church today. It's like, I'm so it, glad I got saved when I did. Lord, That's all I can say. It doesn't even matter if we're visited today. We just want to be able to say that we had the doors open and we had church. Yep. Oh, that's a good question, Kenny. If a person was contemplating, contemplating suicide, would you recommend your church's online service? No. See, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> that's it. Throw him back out the real room. <laughs> Strike that's three. He's out. He's out of here. Kenny. That is a good question. Would you recommend your serve? Would you recommend your own your church's online service for someone that was suicidal? Ooh, that's, a, that's a heavy question. Because if it ain't, if as old people say, if it ain't helping you, then right. would it be helping somebody else? People think God can. What are you trying to say, Daddy? He's um, unless you're trying to say he's not going to do everything for us. Oh. Y'all, hey, so now y'all not gonna do this. How you kick people out? That's it. I'm tired of these two. Y'all is showing out. 
how can I block these? That's, two? that's a good question. I think that should be a question leaders should ask their congregation. If you knew if, if you had a friend, would, what would make you all want to invite somebody to church? We're struggling with our numbers. Our ministry is not growing. What could we do that will make you all comfortable to invite somebody? Because, you know, it's some stuff you and, do. And it's the thing. You're, most of the time, you're not even excited about your own church. So why would you want to invite me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'll only invite them when we have a special guest coming who we know is going to rock it. Exactly. Don't regular service, you know. I'll take do that. Like I say, I, I see it all the time, man. People people go online to pray the worship be dry. They say these songs back from the 1980s. Nothing nothing against that. But I just believe God can give you a fresh worship. God can give you pastors a fresh word. Like the prayer can everything should be fresh, 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 fresh. If you do a ministry full time, you should be so powerful right now so that don't even make no sense. You, so, you ain't got no, no be so cool. unless you sinning. <laughs> Unless you out there sinning, oh, yeah. you should be out there laying on face before the Lord, fasting and praying and consecrating. Because right now, all the power should be manifesting right now. This Mark is the season said, to be dry. Mary said, I think this is the season for those who are used to ministering. Miner, ministering. Ministering. That sounds so uh -huh. weird. Need to sit down and get ministered too. TD Jason, I agree with that. Beginning of the year, he sits his whole. Uh, music, fine arts people down. He sit them down, and they sit. Yep. I think maybe at least for the month of January, he make them all sit down because they. Oh lord, y'all going in on these pastors now. Our main say they sinning. Daryl talking about these pastors too busy watching these other preachers. <laughs> <laughs> I every I agree, Stanley. Every post ought to be oily. Every time you post on Facebook. It, uh instagram it should be oily because it's nothing else to do but to be studying right now and to be learning to my day sinning <laughs> y'all being bad this is not what we want to talk about tonight we want to encourage people to tune into online services it's the truth it's the truth you know like honestly if you're a minister full-time I'm just saying, if you ain't laying before the Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. And I may be wrong for saying this, but I feel like if you ain't laying before the Lord, then you must be doing something else. You ain't they, got no business doing. Uh, they could be counseling a little bit more. Counseling who? You ain't counseling nobody. You're not, yeah. you're not counseling. Mm -mm. Marcus, Yo, everything, everything you do should have some oil to it, especially in this season. This, this should like bring the best out of you right now. I agree. But when you... I'm just up there, then when you up there talking, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, where I'm at now? <laughs> I'm just saying. They may be struggling in this season, too. A lot of them may be losing hope, too. And that's why you might need, you might want to sit down. And think about it. A lot of pastors have been getting exposed during this with a lot of stuff. And, you know, we're not going to get into that but that could be because you you could have been you should have been sitting down and getting ministered to and see that's what um it's been making me mad but matthew stevenson has like not been in his pulpit in weeks but he takes a sabbatical every year from I october to I think, which i think is good it's good for his emotions yeah, he does that every year i don't like it but um, but his people but he has people that he but what i like about his ministry is if even if he's not preaching, the people that he has in place are equipped to carry it. Yeah, yeah, they can. Until they're so equipped to 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 carry it to where you know it doesn't look like even before the pandemic, the attendance did not drop or none of that. So because they that's just the culture of their church, that's the culture of their ministry. So I'm just saying, you know, it's nothing wrong because this is the same God, the same God that speaks. That gives insight to Bishop Jakes, to Matthew Stevenson, to all these pastors who have like transitioned well during this time. What is going on with these other churches that are not doing the same thing? It's the same God. They're not doing what they need to be doing. They not present their bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, <laughs> which is their reasonable services. That's what they're not doing. At least you could. I'm telling you, and let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Don't sleep on these small ministries that's online. Because a lot of these pastors with these smaller congregations, they got the oil. Let me tell you how Bible I'm telling you. Tuesday night. I'm telling you. What's the name of the church? I can't think I'm of it. I'm telling you. True holiness. I be going to Bible study on Thursday, Thursday nights. We've been studying the book of Revelation. 
when I say we be, they be going in on our studying, and my mm-hmm. whole, I'm going to tell you how old I am, all my years in church, I have never even studied the book of Revelation, but when I say it's so so deep and wonderful, and I'm unlearning things that I've learned all my life, and it's me about like, I'm telling you, it's probably like maybe 10 of us on a good Thursday, but then that means everybody gets to ask questions, everybody's getting an understanding. So it's interactive. Yeah, we get homework that we have to do. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would invite y'all, but I don't want to make class big, and then we... <laughs> then you can't ask no questions no more, y'all. But I, I'm telling you, I tune in, I, I have tuned into some smaller yeah. ministries. I'm telling you, some store, storefront, less than 20 member churches, and them pastors, I'm telling you, anointing, this is the season for small churches, I'm telling you, because them, them pastors have really been really pouring out oil. A lot of these churches with 200 or more members. Y'all done got comfortable. I'm telling you. We small church is going to come up. We can't. We can get, when the Lord keeps giving us growth, then we feel like we don't have to do a new thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I we like, got to do all that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, a lot of the smaller ministries are really, so don't sleep on them, you know, just because you ain't never, and I'm telling you, it's a lot of people that, that we have never heard of before. That are some of the greatest preachers and teachers that's out there. And their names may not be on flyers. Their names may not be this and that. But I'm telling you, that's why I say online church is really, a, it's a benefit to this. Because now it's giving those people that we probably would have never heard before an opportunity to minister. And I'm telling you, they, there's a lot of smaller ministries that are being a blessing to folk right now. You know, everybody running into this person and that person. But the very ones you're looking over, they the ones with the oil. I'm telling you. I say every Thursday, Pastor Edwards come and he know their word and he done said it. We had Bible study last week. He had stitches in his mouth. And when I say he, really? taught, he taught us like he didn't have no stitches in his mouth. Wow. Wow. It's like we got to there because I don't know. It's like, man, we don't. I'm a, I feel bad because you, you like overstudy but it's almost like he's <laughs> our main topic the small churches has, has been prepared for COVID since six feet they distance they already if you know I'm telling you they already been they already used to this it's the same all of them and they still flowing like it ain't nothing I'll tell you That's shut up so um he said revelation shows you how deep in Christ John was yeah John was very deep. Seven churches and how seven we, churches. How we, you know, I and, didn't... and then what I like even with John, John was the only disciple that was never killed. He died as an old man. That's how he was able to write revelations. Because he never, he never, all the other disciples were martyred, but he was the only one that was never martyred. Mm. So yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, That's, I'm telling you. That is my dad said mega doesn't mean better. Show it on. Show it on. Because you can have a lot of people there. No way. And I'm going to say this. This just came to me. Y'all, y'all ain't going to like this. But don't get fooled with the crowds. Some people don't really have following. They just have flies. It's not really a following. They're just following you because you miss me. <laughs> I'm just saying. So don't get fooled up by the crowd. Look for the substance. Look for the... Because you can get a whole bunch of flies on top of a, a pile of mess. And you may... You know, if you don't know any better, you'll think it's something good right now. But what? when you fan the flies away, you eating up a mess. So I'm just saying. Look at Daryl trying to get in his Jesus bag. John was the only one that preached Jesus being God rather than just being the Savior. He was. Yes, he was, Daryl. Okay. Yes, he was. Daryl, don't try to preach as you was cussing earlier on the live. Don't about want to hear that. See, this, this one I'm talking about. On live, see? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> And don't sleep on, yep, Peter was another one. That's what I'm saying. During this, during this online church, I have learned more yeah. about God's word than yeah. I've learned growing up um, in church. Like I said, nothing against my foundation. I love, I, I don't take anything from that. But this has actually afforded me an opportunity to really stretch my spiritual walk, the knowledge that I have for God into a whole nother way. I'm able to hear the word of God being preached from different ways that I've never heard it before. So a lot of things that, you know, that I've heard, I was like, okay. But then when I heard, heard another preacher preach it and explain it in a better way, I'm like, okay, now this is what that actually meant. You know what I'm saying? Right. So this really, um, this is really, um, 
been a now, like I said, but that's for me personally. That's not everybody's testimony, but for me personally. So a lot of the foolishness that I used to take years ago, be like, oh, I can't do this and that because I want to live holy. I now realize that was nothing but slavery and bondage. Right, right. So, but like I said, but that's just me. And then also as as you mature, this has been a season of learning for me too. I I specifically told the Lord while I was on maternity leave that I was going to study because I know I know he's doing something in this season. So when when the season changes that we need to be ready. But my appetite has Oh, I'm gonna stop reading my husband's comments. <laughs> but my appetite has even changed. And so I, you can't talk to me with all these cliches and pieces of a <laughs> and pieces of hymns and stuff that you thrown together because they all have the same word. You know, they all had the word holy in it. So it's a bunch of scriptures that have the word holy in it, but they're all out of context and don't mean anything. It changes your hearing, um, especially when you're able to visit other churches and then you hear like Oh, that's not how I always heard that scripture. Scripture taught. That's you mean. That's what the Lord really meant. Okay, let me see. What my and then, yep. And I like Tisha's comment, "Groaning God." And you know what else I've learned? And I'm glad she said it because it just brought something to my mind. Those that you realize how immature those that's been in the faith are now. <laughs> when you grow in your walk with God, it's like the ones that have really been applying what they've been listening. They're growing in God, and those that have been stuck in their ways of religion is showing how immature they still are in some right. areas. So it's like the people that we were supposed to be looking up to and listening to, you know, um, they was what it's what it's saying. It, it's right because I said it. But now, because we have this now opportunity to listen to other pastors and listen right. to other people and, and, and stop. Let me say this because I want to rebuke the devil on this real quick. I felt this in my spirit. Stop letting your pastors make you feel bad because you listen to other pastors on uh, when they live service and yeah. stuff like that. If it's the word of God, it's nothing wrong with listening to that. You know what I'm saying? So don't feel like, oh, I can't listen to nobody but my pastor. There are plenty of pastors and teachers out there that God hand is on that you can listen to and that you can eat from. So just line it up with the word. Make sure it's the word of God. But don't allow your ministry to make you feel bad because you watch somebody else live service. Right. That's true. It's Live from the pit of hell. It's, it's I'm doing it. And it's my personal responsibility for my own spiritual health to get everything that I need. So if you're not preaching and teaching about this, then I have to go elsewhere to look for it. I can't stop. Thank you. Because you're not ready to discuss this. But um, listen, I love public. And if I go to public and they don't have what I want, then I have to go to somewhere else to get it. That yeah. don't mean I don't like public no more. I shop at Walmart and Publix every weekend. I get certain things from Walmart and get my other stuff on Publix. Exactly. The Bible tells us to work out our own soul salvation. Yeah, soul so whatever salvation. I got to do to stay saved, I'm going to do that. So if you got Brother Bobo preaching the Sunday and I don't want to hear him, then I have a right to go tune in to somebody else's church. Sure do. I, have oh, I ain't got no help tonight. I learned during this pandemic <laughs> that pastors can only preach according to what has been revealed to them. So if you don't have a revelation in a certain area, that's not my problem. I'm not going to stop my growth until you receive that revelation. I'm going to go get it from somebody who has it and get what I need to go and do what God told me to do. I like Daryl's comment. He said, when COVID removed the show, you realize how much work preachers really have. A lot of mm. praise team, musicians, etc. That's true. Ooh. It's not fortunate. That's the truth. I'm telling you, a lot of these folk out were like, oh, you really can't preach. <laughs> uh, I mean, I like Sam's. Uh, 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 I like Sam's. Uh, but a lot of these people, I'm telling you. I'm not trying to so, buy. Yeah. Uh, I just want to buy a few things at a time and not trying to. My cash app is Cole. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I'm just saying, man, y'all, we got, you got, this is the season, honestly, everybody for them, everybody got to fend for themselves right now. Because honestly, according to Revelation, there's going to be a time where we're going to have to hide to have church. My and God. you got to be equipped. You got to know the word of God. So you got to do what you can, you know, to get the word of God rooted in deep down in you. They're going to be, that's going to be a time where they're going to stop selling Bibles. You yeah. may not be able to buy a Bible anymore. That's so funny about it. Though. I saw that today. This lady was warning us to get all of the word that we can get and make sure it is rooted in our hearts because it's yeah. going to be time where the only place we can go to reference the scripture is in, in our heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the time to really start 
doing that. And I'm telling you, this this is this season is not as revealed a lot about you know leaders and people that we that we've esteemed so highly. And those that we've esteemed, we're realizing that okay, all right, I see what this is all about. But there are some that are in the trenches that's still down there preaching the truth. Still love God so, for real. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They still love God for real. They still they may be country, but they're anointed. They may not be able to pronounce all their words properly, but they can prophesy for real. Hello. I leave it. I leave it. I'm just saying they may not be able to, you know, be articulate as you would like them to be, but they I'm telling you, you can still the power of God. Tell you, don't sleep on them. I'm my line. I'm telling you. It's a lady I know right now. This lady, you'll never hear her name nowhere. Nowhere. But when I tell you that lady will call me in a minute. She 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 older lady country, but can interpret dreams and can prophesy. So I saw. You know what I'm saying? The Lord told me such 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 such, and she just, I mean, she just go at it. So I'm telling some of the most of the people that some of the people that's really doing the kingdom work, that's really making an impact, are some of the people that we'll never see on a mainstream setting. So you know, don't sleep on. I'm thank y'all, man. Do not sleep on these people. Don't don't compare them to what you've been seeing. You know all of this, but there's some powerful people out here. And hey, me too. You gotta do. Sarah said COVID forced me to study on my own because it caused him to see a lot of false prophets and preachers. That's so true. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Like those saints say, get in the word and stay there till Jesus comes. (laughs) But the word of God. But the word of God. I'm telling you, in the word of God, I got a hiding place. That's a song, ain't it? Oh, watch for it. I got a washboard around here somewhere. No, nah, let me stop. <laughs> you probably got. But yeah, uh, anything you got coming up? Oh, we don't went over our time. Y'all did good tonight. No, I don't have anything coming up. Thank y'all so much for joining us for tuning in. Yeah, so, if y'all have any other topics that y'all would like for us to discuss or to talk about, do not be afraid to reach out to us. Um, we'll talk about anything, pretty, but we'll give it a biblical perspective this is not a, a plat let me say this as well for, for some of these comments we don't bash ministries or people on here <laughs> this right. a, this, but we give real answers and we deal with real issues right. so we try to give it from a biblical christian perspective so we're not on here to bash it this ain't larry Reed or none of that foolishness right. we don't do that over and, here and for the people who feel like we shouldn't be talking about certain things we are here to discuss the intersection of our faith and what yeah. happens culture so yeah this is what people want to want to know and this is this is how we minister so thank yeah. y'all for tuning in don't forget to tune in next monday all right i mean i'm gonna call you right now okay <laughs> yeah we gotta go to air house <laughs> <Bye. Bye. laughs>